If you just upgraded to the latest iOS 18.2, I'm gonna walk you through the steps that you need to take immediately afterwards to protect your privacy, enable the things that need to be enabled for the latest iOS operating system, and just check out new features. I'll walk you through all that, but first hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. Thanks guys. Now, the very first thing that we will do is check to make sure everything is compatible and fully up to date. So let's head into the settings here on your phone and let's scroll down a little bit and tap on general and then about. Now, every time that you update the iOS operating system, you also want to check to see if there's a carrier update with whatever carrier cell service that you have. So let's scroll down a little bit here and you can see here under the eSIM, I have carrier. AT&T 61.0. Now, if there's an update for the carrier signal on my phone, it will just pop up with a little pop-up that looks like this. It'll say carrier settings update, new settings are available, and you can just tap the update button to get the latest version on your phone. Keep in mind, again, once you update your phone to the latest iOS 18.2, you also want the carrier service to be updated fully so that your phone connects to the carrier seamlessly. Now, the second thing we'll do is make sure that your apps are updated to work with the latest iOS operating system. So we're going to head into the app store here. And then at the very top right, let's just tap on your name or profile picture. And then you're going to take your finger and swipe down. This will update and refresh if there are any updates on apps. So you'll be able to see here if there are updates, you'll just tap the update button or update all to get all of these apps, the latest version so that they'll work with Apple intelligence and the iOS 18.2 operating system. So you want everything to work seamlessly together. So now the iOS operating system is updated, the apps, as well as the carrier settings. Now we'll do the fun part. So let's hop into the settings here and let's go back. Now from here, and you can see right under the action button is Apple Intelligence. So tap on that. If you have an iPhone 16 or an iPhone 15, it will show up with Apple Intelligence. However, if you have an iPhone 14, iPhone 13, iPhone 12, unfortunately, it's just not a feature that's available on those phones. The reason for that is Apple decided to run all of the generative AI on the phone itself. So your phone hardware needs to be up to spec so that it can run all of that instead of basically requesting some cloud to run it and then sending it back. Basically, this is Apple being privacy forward, trying to respect your privacy and run everything on the device itself, which I think is great. So if you haven't already, turn on Apple Intelligence at the very top, but also we will want to scroll down and you'll want to choose the ChatGPT and make sure use ChatGPT is turned on. This is a really cool feature because basically if you ask Siri to do something that Siri can't or it's outside of the kind of normal request for Siri, then ChatGPT will seamlessly jump in and complete that request. So it kind of is Siri up front and then ChatGPT after that if you need it. So turn on both of those to make sure that those are both up and running. But I also recommend after you do turn those on, we want to make sure our privacy is intact. So let's go down here and you can see at the very bottom is privacy and security. Tap on that. Now let's scroll down and keep scrolling down and you'll see Apple Intelligence Report as a new feature. So I'm going to tap on it. And it says report duration. This report may include personal data, such as messages, text that you enter into Apple intelligence. So the default for this is 15 minutes or seven days. I would recommend turning this off. I don't necessarily want to share my Apple intelligence report or personal data with Apple. So I would recommend just tapping on that and switching it to off. So essentially switching this off will help prevent any privacy leaks from Apple intelligence externally to someone else. Now that we've done that, I'm going to show you some really cool features that are now available on your iPhone. So let's head into the messages here and I'm just going to tap on a message with myself. Now in the messages, there are two different things that we can do now. One is we can tap on the little plus at the bottom left and you'll be able to see image playground. Tap on that. And essentially what this will do is it will use an image of basically you or someone to start. So let's say I want to use Trevor here. So you can see Trevor 
And you can see it gives you some suggestions like, all right, I want Trevor to be an astronaut. So you can see it will make me into an astronaut. And on here, I can keep swiping over if I wanted to keep remaking that specific photo. And on here, I can also just describe something. Uh, make me on the moon. And let's hit done. So it will take all of these into account. It will make me on the moon as an astronaut. You can see sometimes it does a better job. Sometimes it doesn't do as good of a job. I would prefer if it was kind of zoomed out and you could see all of me and a moon, all that stuff. But essentially you can keep playing with this. And when you're ready, you can just hit done and it will save this image and you can hit send and share that specific image that you've just created with AI on your phone. Another cool feature is that you can create Genmoji, which is essentially generating your own emojis. So we'll tap on the emoji icon at the very bottom left here. And then on here, you can see at the top right now is a smiley face with the plus symbol. So I'm gonna tap on that. Now it says, start with a few words to best describe your new emoji. So I'm going to say astronaut on the moon and hit done and see what it does for this. So you can see it will start to create a little Genmoji here. You can see person, I can just use, let's say an emoji instead. So I'm going to use just a random emoji instead of me and hit done. Now it won't have me as it, it will just have kind of an emoji of an astronaut here. So it'll just create, keep on creating ones as you swipe over and you can hit add once you're ready. And again, it will create that emoji that is custom to you. So you can hit send. And now that emoji will be in your emoji library here. You'll be able to see it and send it. You can always go back and delete those gen emojis if you want to. Now, the last feature that I'll walk you through that's really cool with the new iPhones is the basically image search. So you can see the little image button at the very bottom left here that you can tap on to bring up the camera. Well, now you can tap and hold and it brings up visual intelligence. Now, what this visual intelligence feature does, it's a feature that Google has had for around for a while. Essentially, it does an image search on something. So you can see here, I can hit search at the very bottom right, and it will automatically look at what the basically camera is looking at and search for it within Google. You can see it pops up with that actual remote there. I can also go back, let's hit exit out of here, and let's say the coffee mug. I'm gonna hit the shutter button there, and you can see it automatically detects it. I'm gonna hit search and it will search for that specific coffee mug. And I can go through here and see which one matches the most with it. And then you can see I can buy it. So this is really helpful if you wanted to go in and search for various things like, what's this restaurant? Or what does this plant look like? You know, what type of plant is it? Or basically visually identify certain things. It basically does a reverse image search on Google to be able to find out what those are. Now, the very last thing that I would recommend doing is just heading into your settings here. And let's go all the way back. And what I usually find is after I've updated everything, a lot of times there's a lot of stuff working in the background, updating things, updating cache. I would recommend just hitting general and at the very bottom, just hitting shut down. So turn off your phone and turn it back on. You'd be surprised how many times basically just turning your phone off and turning it back on helps battery life, helps performance, all of that stuff. If you find your phone is lagging a little bit, just turn everything off and turn it back on. Sometimes phones are running for days or weeks or months without a proper reboot. So I always recommend maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks, just turning off your phone and turning it back on. It's really healthy for the phone. I hope this helps. If it did, hit the like button down below and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.